Hello subscribers, here is another review, and this time it's the Collecte 2017 Box of Prehistoric Marine Animals set. Now, this was one of, my, one of my birthday presents, the one my parents gave me, and I've been wanting this set for a really long time, and I'm so uh, happy to have this figure, because as you know, this set has a Zephactinus and a Lead Sickness figure, which, which are um, two animals I've been wanting in figure form for a long time. And as you can see, the container it's some, somewhat similar to um, Safari's tubes, but not exactly. For Safari's tubes, there's like a cap on the end of it, and you have to open that cap and dump all your figures out. This one, you can just open up the lid, and then just opens, and you can, you know, take out your figures without, you know, dumping them out. And as you can see right here, uh, here's the uh, little packaging, or the little, you know, uh, paper on here. See the front, the Collecte logo, and then you got the artwork of the, um, the Dunkelosteus, the Camerocerus, the Zephactinus, and the Trilobite. And on this side, you got the warning labels, and on the back, you got a picture of Mr. Anthony Beeson right here. And then right here, you got um, the names of the 12 animals in the set. So, let's waste no time and get these uh, minifigures out of the container. Here is all the prehistoric marine animals out of the container. Now, let's start by taking a look at each one of them. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the set comes with this cool, this cool little catalog right here. As you can see, it's got all the figures that, that are in the set. And on the back, you got a picture of Anthony Beeson right there. And then some, oh, sorry. Then some other stuff on this little paper. First, let's take a look at the arthropods, which there's only one, which is a trilobite known as Olenoids. Now, this is a pretty cool figure right here. Also, we don't often get trilobite toys. See, uh, this one's nicely painted. You got, you know, a glossy black eye, a brown coloration, and also... A shaded white underbelly right here and you see all these legs right here there there's a lot of legs on this trilobite and see the nicely detailed exoskeleton right here looks really cool you know your typical trilobites so yeah this is a very cool addition to the set next let's take a look at these cephalopods we have one orthocone and four ammonites now let's take a look at the cephalopod that evolved first which is the camerocerus now this is a pretty neat looking figure right here and i've been wanting a camerocerus figure for quite some time after, you know, I saw it in BBC's Chase by Sea Monsters with Nigel Marvin, and we finally have one. As you can see, there's a good amount of detail in this figure. You see you got, you know, the lines on its cone-shaped shell, and also the tentacles, which are uh, sculpted together. I would have preferred if they were, you know, individually sculpted. But my only nitpick with this figure is probably the paint job. Because it is a pretty bland paint job, and I would have uh, preferred that he added, like, some striping on the shell. Because, you know, this is just two colors, green and brown. But, either way, this is still a great figure right here. And it's finally nice to have a Camerocerus figure. From the early Cretaceous, we have the Australoceros. Now, this is a bizarre looking ammonite right here. Most of us are wondering, how did this animal swim? Mostly because of its, you know, it's a weird shaped shell. It doesn't coil until, you know, the end area right here. And see, it has a pretty cool paint scheme. Not, not really natural, but... In my opinion, it certainly is more appealing than the um, Camerocerus. As you can see, the base color of the shell is white with some orange striping. And also, the tentacles are orange. There's also two glossy black eyes. And the tentacles are individually sculpted as opposed to the Camerocerus. And see, there's even a little beak in there. It's nice how Collecte um, collect is paying a lot of attention to detail, even to, the, um, sm even to their smaller figures. So yeah, this is an awesome figure right here, and it's a nice addition to the set. Here we have one of the late Cretaceous cephalopods of this set, which is the straight-shelled ammonite known as Bacchiolites. Now, this figure, in my opinion, looks a lot like a carrot for some reason, mostly because of, of its orange cone-shaped shell right here. But as you can see, there is a decent amount of detailing on here. See, so you got the, the lines on the shell right here, and you got those tentacles which are sculpted together, even though, like, with the Camerocerus, I would have preferred if they sculpted them individually. And, you know, two glossy black eyes. And I would have preferred, like, if they chose a different color scheme for this. This is, in my opinion, a pretty boring paint job. You know, it's just orange. So, yeah, not much to say about this figure. Even though it's it's decent, I guess. But not really one of my favorites of the set. But it is cool to have, you know, a Baculites figure. Next up is another Lake Cretaceous Cephalopod, which is the Diplomoceros. Now, this is probably one of the most, if not the most bizarre uh, creature in the set. This isn't called the paperclip ammonite for nothing. And the plastic on here is flexible enough that it could be used as a paperclip. 
And like the um, other cephalopods in the set, you're getting a good amount of detail on this. So you got lines on the shell right here. And of course you got the tentacles. But uh, like the Camelocerus and the Baculites, the tentacles are sculpted together. Like I said uh, many times, I preferred if the tentacles were sculpted, you know, individually. But it's fine either way. It's not really, you know, a huge problem. And of course you got, you know, the glossy black eyes right here. It's pretty cool. And of course the colors are just, you know, yellow and green. Yellow tentacles and a green shell. So yeah, I think this is probably my favorite cephalopod in the set due to, you know, how bizarre it looks. And yeah, this is an awesome addition to the set. Here's the last cephalopod in the set, which is from the Lake Cretaceous, the largest ammonite of all time, the Parapusosia. See, this is a pretty nice figure right here, even though the color scheme is kind of vibrant for a sea creature, especially an ammonite. The shell probably would have been like, you know, a dark blue or a gray color in real life. But I still think it looks pretty cool. It does kind of remind me of a bumblebee. See, of course, the base color of the shell is yellow with black striping. And you got, you know, orange tentacles. And there's even, you know, the little beak in there. And see, the eyes are, it has a white eye with a black pupil, which is something the other cephalopods in the set didn't have. So yeah, this is a pretty cool figure right here. Another nice addition to the set. Now we're on to the marine reptiles of the set. And as you can see, we have three of them. First, we have an ichthyosaur from the early Jurassic, which is the Temnodonosaurus. Now, it's, ob it's obvious that this is just a smaller version of the standard Temnodonosaurus from 2015. As you can see, the pose, the color scheme is basically the same. And also, uh, this one still has a shrink wrapping, like on the larger figure. And the only real difference between the two is that this one is in birthing. So let's bring in the, uh, the larger figure right here. As you can see, everything's basically the same. And if this one didn't have the proportions of an adult Temnodonosaurus, then this one could have been used as, you know, the baby for this one. So yeah, not much to say about this figure, but it's still pretty cool though. Next up, we have a marine reptile from the late Jurassic, which is the Pliosaurus. Now I think this is the largest figure in the set. Now like the Temnodonosaurus, this figure is just a smaller version of the larger figure, which of course is the, um, Deluxe Pliosaurus. Now the only real difference between the larger figure and the smaller figure is that this one doesn't have the lampreys on its back. And this one still has um, the same inaccuracy as the larger figure, which is the um, shrink wrapping around the skull, as you can see here. And it's on both sides, obviously. And of course, uh, this thing, of course, the pose and the color scheme, basically the same thing as the deluxe figure. Creamy underbelly and a swampy green for the top. Now I think uh, this could be one of my favorite figures from the set, mainly because, you know, it's um, a smaller version of the Deluxe Pliosaurus, which happens to be one of the best collected figures, in my opinion, that's ever been made. So it's a pretty cool figure right here. Here's the last marine reptile in the set, which is the Lake Cretaceous Turtle Archelon. Now, ever since I saw Chase by Sea Monsters, I've been kind of wanting an Archelon figure for quite some time, much like the Carmoceros. And thanks to Collect Day, we have one, although a small figure, not a large one. And as you can see, the detailing on here, it's okay, but not as good as, say, the trilobite or some of the um, cephalopods. See, you can only see some skin folds around the base of the flipper near the shell, and also on the neck, too. And as you can see, the head sculpt, it looks like a pretty happy Archelon. And see, the color scheme, you know, a creamy underbelly, and then a very dark colors up here. See, a dark brown with some bar barely noticeable spots up here, and also some black flippers. So yeah, it's nice to have an Archelon figure. Now let's move on to the prehistoric fish of the set. And as you can see, we have three of them. From the Devonian, we have the giant armored fish, Dunkelosius. Now this is a pretty cool looking figure right here. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of detailing here. Just smooth skin, no scales, as you can see. And the main color colors are just like, you know, gray on the top. And um, an orange apricot on the bottom. And as you can see, the tail on here, it's supposed to be a bit more shark-like than this. And uh, the armor plating on the head is actually covered in skin, unlike the Schleich and favorite Dunkelosteus. And the overall uh, figure seems to be based off of the CGI model of the Dunkelosteus from the documentary Animal Armageddon. And one thing I don't like about this figure, it's minor. See, uh, the tooth plates are colored white, which kind of gives off the impression that they're teeth, even though they're not. I wish it could have been like, you know, a dark gray so it wouldn't look too much like teeth, but it's minor. 
Overall, this is still a cool figure, and it's nice to have a mini Dunkleosteus. Here we have the giant filter-feeding fish from the late Jurassic, the lead sick beast. Now, this is probably, I think, the second uh, largest figure in the set. And uh, this was one of the figures I was really excited for when I got this set. And it's probably my second favorite figure in the set. And I've been wanting a lead sick beast figure for a while. And, I, and thanks to Collecte, we finally have one. As you can see... Not a whole lot of detailing, you know, just smooth skin. But as you can see, there is a good amount of detailing on the face. See all the gill covers right here, and around the eye. And in the mouth, you see, it's toothless, but this, of course, this isn't a predator. This is a filter feeder, like, say, a blue whale or a whale shark. And see, I really like this glossy black color scheme right here. And, of course, the light gray underbelly. And see, this thing seems to be scientifically accurate, except for, um, one issue. Lead sick these according to fossils, I think, it's only supposed to have one anal fin right here, not two pelvic fins. But then again, that's something minor. I still like this figure either way. So, if you want to lead sick beast figure, I think this is the the closest we can get. Hopefully that Collecte can make a deluxe lead sick beast in the future. See, as you can see, this is a really awesome figure right here. Very natural color scheme and awesome sculpt. Last but not least, from the Lake Cretaceous, we have these Zephactinus. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know that this is my favorite figure in the set. This was the figure I was most looking forward to when it was first revealed and when I got the set in hand. You saw me commenting on other people's videos. You saw me talk about it in my videos. Yes, we finally have a effect in this figure. Not a large one, but a small one. You know, it's better than nothing. And I've been wanting a figure of this fish for a long time. When I mean by that, I mean a very long time, ever since I first saw it in Chased by Sea Monsters and National Geographic Sea Monsters. And we and we haven't gotten one ever since. Uh, as the fact that said, you know, it's big appearance on, you know, documentaries and movies. And I don't know why this guy is so underrepresented in toy form. He seems to be, you know, just almost as popular as Dunkleosteus, who gets more figures than this guy, sadly. But as you can see... This figure is seems to be very scientifically accurate with the natural color scheme. As you can see, white on the bottom, and then, then you know the rest of the figure is just gray. With the inside of the mouth is pink, which you can barely see, and of course uh, two glossy black eyes. And also all the fins seem to be in the correct uh, place, and the front and the front teeth on the upper jaw are sticking out like with the fossil show. Yes, the fact that this is known from plenty of good skeletal material and also. A few complete skeletons but as you can see we only have one minifigure and yes we finally like I said we finally have this fact in this figure you don't know how happy I am to have this figure in the set and this is a very welcome addition well there you have it subscribers this is my review on the collect day 2017 box of mini prehistoric marine animal set overall I have to give this set a 10 out of 10 due to the inclusion of these obscure species and also the inclusion of Elite Sick Beast and the Zephactinus figure. Honestly, I've got so many things to say about the Zephactinus figure, I could do a separate review uh, for this little guy right here. So, if you guys like this review, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next review.